Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call to order the Monday, February 24th, 7.20 p.m. public hearing on Council Order 2020-023, a utility grant of location, Mass Electric, Verizon, Watkins Street. Uh, at this point, uh, I would like to invite anyone wishing to speak either in favor, uh, in opposition, or indifferent, meaning you just want to come up and say hello. Uh, I would invite anyone having any comment whatsoever relative to this matter to come up to the podium and speak. If you are not comfortable speaking in public, uh, you can always sign the, um, uh, the sheet in the back uh, expressing your written opposition, your written uh, support, or your written indifference to this matter. Is there anyone here from the utilities that wants to speak on this? No? Go ahead. Come on, Come on up. Introduce yourself, please. This National Grid. The uh, reason why I'm here tonight is um, looking for a rental location for Pole 10 on Watkins Street. Uh, Tony's Clam Shack um, is doing some work on their property. And presently, we have a wire crossing their lot, which serves the strand lots, house numbers 851, 853, 857, 859, 861 Quincy Shore Drive. At the same time, Tony's Clam Shack is also um, doing some work to the property. So he wants to have us relocate the wire and gonna give us an easement down his property as well as this pole 10-1 is gonna to serve Tony's. They're gonna to have an underground service to the building. So in a nutshell, that's what this is all about. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone, I'll open it up again. Anyone wishing to express a position on this? Going once, going twice. That being said, I'll close the public hearing uh, portion relative to 2020-023. Uh, Madam Clerk, did we receive any written communications relative to this? No, we did not. Okay, we did not. All right. Um, at that point, do I have to start the gavel here? All right, and I'll close that public hearing. And just in time for our second public hearing of the evening on 20, Council Order 2020-024, Utility Grant of Location National Grid Gas on Newbury Avenue. Anyone, you want to speak? Let's please introduce yourself. Barbara Keller, National Grid Gas. Good evening. Uh, Not to be confused with electric. That's correct. Yeah, <laughs> That's correct. yeah I hear gas, uh, they're yeah. better people than the electric, but you know, we'll, we'll let that go. Uh, the National Grid hereby respectfully requests your consent to install and maintain approximately 96 feet, more or less of six inch gas main in Newbury Ave, Quincy from the eight inch gas main in the intersection of East Guantanam Southwesterly uh, to the existing six inch gas main at pole number 29 Newbury Ave for a system reinforcement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilor Harris. Um, Barbara, um, I just want to congratulate you. I hear you're retiring from National Grid. Thank you, yes I am. An OFD person. 40 Very years. Good. 40 years, yeah. great, good Good for you. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, at this point I'd like to open it up. You can sit down. You can sit down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, beat it, we need a big hook, right? Uh, at this point I'd like to open it up to anyone wishing to speak in favor in opposition or in indifference to this matter, 2020-024, utility grant of location, National Grid Gas, Newbury Avenue. Anyone wishing to speak, please come up to the podium. Let your voice be heard. If you're not comfortable speaking publicly, you can sign in favor, in opposition, or in indifference in writing in the back. Uh, Madam Clerk, have we received any written correspondence relative to this matter? No, we have not. No, we have not. Okay, going once, going twice, Three times, I will close the public hearing on 2024 now. Looks like we got uh, about five minutes. We'll just sit around and stare at each other until the city council meeting starts.
All right. Good evening. Calling to order the Monday, February 24th, 2020, City Council meeting. Madam Clerk, if you will take a roll call of the members. Councilor Kane. Councilor Kroll. Councilor DeBona. Present. Oh, here we go. Councilor Harris. Present. Council Mahoney. Present. Council McCarthy. Present. Council Bec Helmucci. Present. Council Phelan. Present. President Liang. Six members. You have a quorum. Six members. We have a quorum. Uh, for the record, Councilor Kroll notified me that he'd be running a little bit late tonight, so we expect him to be joining us midway through. Um, next, um, as our as our country is on the precipice of potential peace in Afghanistan, which is the longest running war in our nation's history, tonight for the 2,457 United States soldiers who have lost their lives and the more than 20,320 who have returned home seriously wounded, I ask that we take a moment of thoughtful reflection upon their sacrifice as we pray for divine guidance. Thank you, if you'll now turn to the flag and join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. I suppose this is a time where I have to grant you yes. the privilege of reading the open meeting law, which the state legislature passed and exempted themselves from. Let's hear that. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are me being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Moving to our agenda this evening, number one on the agenda, Madam Clerk. 2020-043. Land abandonment easement for 52 64 Warren Ave in 118 Oak Colony Avenue. Councillor Phelan. Mr. President, through you. Um, president Pro Temp. President Pro Temp. No, you're in the seat. You're going to be president. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, just to uh, go over this, this is a continuation from something we did at the last meeting. It's an easement where we're giving up to get actually a bigger easement for uh, drainage. It's something that would be very beneficial to the neighborhood. It was, it was a case that went in that was decided in land court and then also re-decided again in uh, Superior Court. So this is, part of, this is part of a court order that the city has to comply with. And so I um, asked the members to, uh, to move and uh, vote on this issue. If anyone has any questions, I know, I know we have uh, Janet, from the Janet Peckin from the law office who, who worked on this case. Um, but I would urge my members to move this tonight if, uh, if they could. Thank, Thank you. you. We have a motion from Councillor Phelan for passage of this measure. Do I hear a second? Second from Councillor uh, McCarthy. Anybody wishing to speak on the motion? Okay. Um, do we need to take a roll call vote or can we? Okay. Madam Clerk, if you call the roll. Councillor Kroll. Councillor DeBona. Yes. Council Harris, yes. Council Mahoney, yes. Council McCarthy, yes. Council Phelan, yes. President Palmucci. Yes. Six members. And the matter passes. Thank you, Councilor Phelan. Uh, second item on the agenda, Madam Clerk. 2020-044, an appropriation for $250,000 for fire department new firefighter recruits turnout gear. Uh, thank you. Councillor Harris. Thank you, um, um, President Pro Temp. Right, did I get it right? Thank you. Um, this, this appropriation is, is pretty clear. We've, we've voted on, on similar, uh, we've voted on something like this prior. Um, the fact that uh, the new uh, gear for the, for the, um, the new recruits, it's, it's really essential. Um, it's essential. And I'm going to use the line I used the last time. Um, these young folks that are coming on, some of them maybe not that young, but these folks that are coming on, uh, they should be given every opportunity to stay safe. 
And um, that bell is going to ring, as I've said <clears throat> before. That bell is going to ring, and they're going to come help the citizens of Quincy. We need them um, to be safe. Um, having two, two sets of gear is, is important. And um, of course, with the, the high rate of uh, cancer that, that is, um, takes place when you take this job, um, this helps um, fight that and um, protect these, these folks. So uh, they answer the bell. It's, the bell is ringing for us to pass this, and I move uh, that we approve this um, uh, $250,000. Thank you, fund. Council Harris. Do I hear a second? Council DeBone, second. Anybody wishing to uh, speak on behalf of the matter? Councilor Mahoney. Can I just ask a quick question? I was, I was curious to know, because this, um, this is free cash that we're going to be spending this from. And Who are you um, asking this question to? I'm asking it through, to you through okay. to uh, Mr. Walker. As long as you're not asking me questions. No, no. Um, could, could I just, I, I'd like a breakdown of what the free cash was used for um, and how much free cash we had left. Through you, Mr. President, I'm going to defer to the auditor who has that material. Thank you. Um, the free cash was certified back in November at 8070089 In December, 2900000 was used to reduce the tax rate. An additional 2585044 was used per the, um, to going into various funds, the stabilization, the inclement weather fund, and the OPEB in accordance with the financial policies that the council adopted. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a balance in the account at this time of 2585045 And then the, for the three appropriations tonight, the total, so we'll yeah. be decreasing it by about, we'll be left with about 1.9, is that about? Uh, the issue, after these three appropriations, there'll be 2045000 um, um, left. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I am going to be supporting this, but this is one of the things that really I, I, I stress that when we're doing the budget, when we, we budget things out and we have a, 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 an enormous amount of money that's left over, which was $8 million plus this year, um, and we, we hold back $2 million or $2.5 million that could be going back to the taxpayers, the city of Quincy, we should really be budgeting for these things. I realize that we ended up taking on more, and this would be through to Chris Walker as well. How many, how many new um, fire... fire um, People were hired this year for men and women. Through you, through you, Mr. President, 35. 35. And what were you anticipating originally? We were anticipating in the ballpark of 14 to 16. 14 to 16. And 14 to 16, was that budgeted for in the budget that you would have? Those were, but those were existing budgeted positions. So, so in the future, I, I know that this is something that we, we have done. Um, but I, and I, for, this, for this point, a half a million dollars, I'm not, I, I, will, I will approve those. But I am very concerned about the fact that the taxpayers of the city of Quincy are really they're stressing and they are, are hurting in the, um, in the market right now. And we, are, we keep over budgeting and coming back with these enormous amounts in free cash and spending them. And I just I really have to, to stress that because this, when we came back to vote on that budget and vote on the taxes, it was them who were being hurt because of our over budgeting. So thank you very much. Any other counselors wishing to be heard? Councilor DeBone. Thank you, Mr. President, for tonight. Um, just, just to elaborate a little bit about these 35 new hires that just came on the swearing in this past week. Um, it was packed in here. It was something that we needed for the city of Quincy. Um, it may have been budgeted for a little bit less, but over the next five years, we're, we're going to probably be losing 25 of our firefighters, and this will be a good segue into um, these um, young men or uh, individuals to help us with with the city of Quincy, and there's a lot more fires than people say, uh, think, or been reported. I think it was close to a thousand this past year. Um, you know, public safety is probably one of the most important things besides education in our Quincy public schools. Uh, we have to make sure that the morale is strong inside our firehouses. So um, I'm very um, importantly that you know these, this gear and you know the appropriations that we've done in the past for bonding. It's very important for our fire stations that are a little run down at points, and we've rem you know put the proper funding in place for this. Um, you know what it entails is you got a lot of different sets of um, tails and pants. You got leather boots, you got rubber boots, you got fire armor gloves, um, you know glass helmets, gear bags, um, you know all new. Um, so this is included in the two hundred fifty thousand dollars for our new recruits to um, 
do a good job for the city. So I'm glad to second this and support this appropriation. Um, I just wanted to elaborate to, to the viewers and the people that might not know exactly what it's exactly for. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, when you mean losing 25 fire fires, you mean to retirement? To retirement. Yes, yes. right, okay. Uh, any other counselors wishing to be heard? Okay, um, I would just uh, like to um, acknowledge that I appreciate Councilor Mahoney's sentiment uh, regarding the taxpayer. Uh, I share the same concern about uh, quote unquote free cash uh, that we end up spending up here every year um, that's left over from the prior year budget. Uh, I, I think it's probably no coincidence that over the past several years, what we spend free cash on has been um, specifically dedicated to the fire service and the police service because at least from where I sit, those are things that I'm very rarely going to say no to, um, supporting the folks who are out there literally risking their lives. So um, I will support that, uh, I will support this because I think that uh, the taxpayer expects that when their house is on fire, we're gonna send some guys with some water. So um, at, the end of the at the end of the day, that's the most important thing is that we keep our residents and um, visitors to Quincy safe. So and, I, and um, prior to uh, taking the vote, I just acknowledge in the back of the room, we have uh, Acting Chief Joe Jackson with us. Thank you for being here tonight, Chief, and our local uh, president, Tom Bowes. Thank you for being here as well. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you call the roll. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Council Pelmucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. Five members. Passes. The matter passes, so thank you. Uh, we have another item on the agenda, number three, which affects our fire service. Madam Clerk. 2020-045, an appropriation for 270,000 FEMA grant local match for new fire engine. Upon the recommendation of the fire chief and with his honor, the mayor, the sum of $270,000 is hereby appropriated for the fire department contractual for the purpose of equipping of a new fire engine obtained through the grant of a federal emergency management agency and related spend expenditures. Same to be charged to free cash. I didn't know if I told you this, Nikki, but I'm not gonna entertain any motion to waive the readings tonight, so. Okay. Limber up. Yeah, if somebody else could. No. Uh, <laughs> Councilor Harris and then Councilor Phelan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again, uh, Mr. President, uh, pro temp. Um, again, uh, I understand the concerns, uh, and we all hear them. There's not a, a member of this council that doesn't hear about uh, taxes and free cash. I remember uh, my, I was in office about uh, a month and a half, and we were talking about the budget, and, uh, and, the ta and it was the, one of the first years of taxes we, we got hit um, as citizens. But we, we took $3.75 million dollars out of free cash to pay something off that saved the taxpayers money. So, um, so what we do with our free cash, cash sometimes does save the folks money and um, with this coming out of free cash, I wanna make a motion for the $270,000 um, FEMA grant local uh, for the uh, new fire engine because again, um, it only helps uh, each and every one of us uh, that live here in the city and the people who are visiting now. So, and we're growing, which is another issue as well. But um, uh, this is important, and um, uh, I very seldomly speak up, and I am, you know, out, I let all of you all have your way, and this time I'm speaking up because this is important. Thank you, Councilor Harris. We always enjoy when you do speak up. Councilor Phelan. To you, um, to the city auditor. Um, the two hundred seventy dollars, seventy thousand. That's a match. Yes, it is. No. Um, how much is, is the actual fire engine this, cost? I don't have that information. There's a state grant that will cover the cost of the um, the fire um, engine, and this is just to outfit the engine. Could Chief I, Jackson, could I ask if you want to. Chief, Acting Chief Jackson. Thank you. Do you want to make any type of introduction about this before uh, you entertain? Uh, no, that's fine. Just as far as, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as the match, uh, the Murphys are grant writers. They were able to get uh, 545000 through the government for this. So I just wanted to speak to that as far as the match. It's, okay. We've got, is, it, is this going to be the ladder going into Wallison? 
Uh, no, this will be the new engine two in North Quincy. The new engine two in North yeah. Quincy. Okay. Um, I think that's great. They, I think they also help get the money to hire the additional firefighters, if I'm not mistaken. They're unbelievable. So yeah. they're doing. They really are. They're, they're saving yeah. the taxpayers a ton of money. They are. And, um, they, you know, from my point of view, they should be really congratulated and, and thank them for the service. Because one of the things I did when I was going door to door last year, I came up several times, was a lot of people were talking about the building and stuff like that. And some of the comments I got, is, is there enough on the fire service to take care of these new buildings? Now, I think maybe that's something for a discussion for another time, but I'm certainly glad to see the additional, additional equipment coming in, the additional firefighters going on, and seeing the trucks are fully manned. Because I think um, we are building a lot, and the demands that are gonna be coming on the fire department are gonna be great, and they've answered the answered the call every time but so i'm ve very glad to see this and i'm happy to spend it i realize that sometimes we got to be careful with free cash it is taxpayers money but i think the bang for the buck that we we are getting from the additional firefighters which it which it really needed and i think is a great thing to go on and the additional pieces of equipment so keep them on the job keep them going <laughs> keep them writing no thank <laughs> but, you very uh, much thank you for your support yeah but i'm a, i'm an enthusiastic supporter of this mr chairman Mr. President. Absolutely. And I'll take that as a second. Yeah, as a second. Any other counselors wishing to be heard? Councilor DeBona? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, any time that we can leverage any type of other funding to, to piggyback upon um, not paying it out of pocket for just the original taxpayer is always a win-win. And then that's what we're doing. You know, you get a little skin in the game and it helps us out. Um, so I'm glad to support this. I just want to say that, you know, uh, um, is it going to fit inside uh, North Quincy? <laughs> Is, yeah. it, is it going to make the little? It will. It will, okay. Yeah, it'll definitely fit. Because I know um, on some days it's about an inch difference of getting True. some of the apparatus inside the. They didn't build these buildings in the 30s to fit the apparatus today. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, you know, so it's going to make the, it's going to make the, it's going to make the height. Yeah, yeah it okay. will. Okay. It'll Thank fit. You. <laughs> Thank you. It wouldn't fit in West Quincy, though. Oh, it wouldn't fit West Quincy. Sure. <laughs> Any other? Members wishing to be heard on this matter? No? Thank you, Chief. Thank you Thank for you the very much. work you Thank do. You. Um, before we vote on this, can I, can I ask Madam Auditor, um, I always find it odd when we talk about and use the term free cash as if it's free money that has no consequence. Can you just explain why we call it free cash and where that name comes from? Um, I don't have a logical explanation. That's it's the how Department I, of Revenue, right? Yeah, they it, call it, it free cash. It comes from at the end of each fiscal year, when we close out the fiscal year, we go through what revenues we have collected, we go through the budget, what is remaining in the budget, um, we look at every one of the accounts that we have, whether they be grants, loans, whatever, we, do, we balance out all those accounts. If any of those accounts are in a deficit for whatever reason, that comes off the free cash, which is, is a terminology that the Department of Revenue uses. And essentially, free cash is unencumbered, meaning it's unencumbered, and it's it's you know you could have your budget, and you could have say you had for whatever reason we didn't have a lot of snow on a particular year. Don't jinx us, right? Touch wood. Um, there, what could happen is you could have a million dollars left at the end of the year on your budget. You could have you could have revenue numbers. Um, I know last year what happened. We when we went to Blue Cross um, when we were in the GIC. We used to get a credit for the uh, Medicare um, Part D, I believe, and this time it comes in as a, with the Blue Cross, it comes in as an as a revenue. So that was extra revenue that we were not, can, you know, we weren't, we didn't count on. So all these different things, uh, we might get a reimbursement from FEMA or MEMA on that particular year. All these different things come into that calculation of what the Department of Revenue calls free cash. Thank you very much. That was a terrific explanation. Thank you. Uh, Madam uh, Clerk, on, if you'll take the roll on 2020-045. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Palmucci. Yes. Six members. All right. The matter passes. Moving on to number four on our agenda. 2020-045. 046, an appropriation for 65 Wave 000. the reading. The reading, the reading shall be waived. Do you want to tell us what this is, 
Madam Clerk? Yes, thank you. Um, this is an appropriation for the city clerk's election personnel services election workers account. Um, there was a discrepancy due to um, a delay in state funding for um, that line. So I ask, and minimum wage, um, there are 324 poll workers in our city, and the minimum wage did go up. So um, that took a hit on the budget line, and so did um, the delay. So for that, I ask um, to put the $65,000 to be applied to the election workers budget line to offset the impact of the increase. And we pay the minimum wage? Uh, yes, and um, also the five days of um, early mandated voting. early voting, which we did not anticipate because we didn't know until January of this year. Okay. Uh, Councilor McCarthy has a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Do I hear a second? Do I hear a second? Councilor Harris. Any yeah, second. Uh, anybody wishing to speak on the motion? Seeing none. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor DeBona? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Mahoney? Yes. Councilor McCarthy? Yes. Councilor Failing? Yes. President Pelmutry? Yes. Six members. Six members voting in the affirmative. The matter passes. Madam Clerk, moving on to number five in agenda, on our agenda. 2020-047, an appropriation for $3 million for Broad Meadows Middle School. Council McCarthy moves to waive, waive the reading. Council McCarthy, if you'd like to be heard. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yeah, Hold on a second. No one heard what you said. We forgot to turn your microphone on. Go ahead. Start over. Oh, You're good now. I'd like to um, move the $3 million appropriation into the Finance Committee. Okay. Do we hear a second? Councilor Harris, seconds. Anyone else have anything to say relative to moving this? Why are you standing up? Anyone else have anything to say relative to moving this to Finance Committee? No? We, we don't need a roll on that, right? Nope. All those in favor of referring 2020-047 to the Finance Committee, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. All those who don't want to vote, say nay. Okay. Uh, matter passes. We'll move that to uh, Finance Committee for advertisement. Madam Clerk, number six on our agenda. 2020-048, in order of Municipal School Buildings Authority Statement of Interest. Council Harris waves the reading. Council Harris, would you like to be heard on this matter? Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Mr. President Pro Temp. Um, I would like to first um, make a motion to approve um, the Statement of Interest to the Massachusetts School Building Program Authority to qualify the building under the state's new school construction program. As you know, Squanum Elementary has been identified by the mayor and previously by both this body and the school committee as our community's most important school construction priority. We have filed the statement of interest the previous two years, understanding that while work continued on the Southwest uh, Middle School, that we were unlikely to be qualified for multiple projects at the same time. With the beautiful Southwest now open uh, and the project itself approaching formal closeout, we are hopeful that the time has come for the Squanum Elementary, Elementary to be accepted into this program. Um, I have spoken to the mayor and it is his intention to get the ball rolling with planning, planning and feasibility studies this year, regardless of the project status with the MSBA. That way, when our number is called, we'll be ahead of the game. There is no question about the need for the project and for the families I represent in Squanum and North Quincy. So I would respectfully request, again, my colleagues join in supporting this important step forward. And thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Harris. We appreciate your hard work on this uh, particular matter, getting a new school over there. Uh, do I hear a second? Councilor Phelan seconds. Anybody wishing to be heard on the matter? Councilor DeBona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just real quick, um, I think uh, um, if I could correct me if I'm wrong, um, the statement of interest was in last year. And unfortunately, didn't we lose it to one particular school above us? Does anybody have that information? A mayor's representative, maybe? For you to Mr. Walker. 
Through you, Mr. President, Council, I'm unaware uh, if there was some sort of competition or how it was looked at school versus school. Um, the sense I believe we've received from the executive director of the MSBA was more along the lines of, hey guys, this will be your fourth school in 10 years. We've got 350 other cities and towns. Uh, you may have to hold your horses a little bit, finish out Southwest, and let's see where we're at um, at that time. And that was sort of the guidance we received. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Yeah, just, just to elaborate a little bit about this, this is this was built in 1919 with the, with the um, addition constructed in 1971. I know there was a lot of repairs being done inside the media center slash uh, library where there was some rain. Um, so we've been passing up this school for quite a while. So it, it's, it's Guantanamo's turn to uh, elementary to get into the mix of things. As we go on in time with the MSBA, a lot more cities, towns, and municipalities have been coming on board and, and competing to get funding um, that's getting reimbursed. So this is a great program. People are coming on board and I'm looking forward to um, getting this one through and getting the kids of Squanum and uh, North Quincy a, a new school. There's also special education inside that schooling. So I'd like to keep that going and maybe we can get some space, more space, because as the special needs grows, we need to find other, uh, other avenues uh, as well as our own uh, facility um, that's going to be behind Central Middle School, uh, the old colony facility. We, we still need to find room for our children especially our kindergarten. So looking forward to, the, to this being passed and moving on to the school committee. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Mahoney. Any other councilor wishing to be heard on this matter? Councilor Mahoney. It's more of a question than it is. I realize that Squanum has been, um, has been on the docket for a while. It's been on the, I think it was there when I was in the school committee myself. But um, Councilor DeBona mentioned something. Will we be um, looking for MSNBC? Uh, M Will we be looking for the MSNBC. Mass School Building Authority? Yeah, Rachel yeah. Maddow is going to come down and open it up for us. Coverage. Will we be looking for Mass School Building Authority for the new um, ENC building for the new? Will that be going? Will that be strictly 100% tax taxpayers funding that? Or is that something? Or, or in the new St. Mary's too? I guess I'm just curious to know because we have two schools that we have on the dockets going forward. So I'm just curious to know where those stand, sure. separate from separate from the importance of 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 course Squatham Elementary School. Sure. Through you, Mr. President. Um, yes, absolutely. Relative to St. Mary's, when that time comes, hopefully in the, the relatively near future, um, we will be seeking MSBA assistance for that project. Uh, that's a little bit of a different animal than what we have done. Uh, in the past relative to New Quincy High School, New Central Middle School, New Southwest Middle School, New Squanum Elementary School. Uh, it's a little different because it's a school that does not exist at this point in time. Uh, it would be a, a new school with different enrollment. Um, it's not replacing an older school, it's creating a new school. So we're gonna have a, to deal with a different set of standards right. with MSBA. Um, do they have those standards kind of outlined? I, off the top of my head, uh, Madam Council, I do not know. Yeah. Uh, but I know that it's something that will remain on the radar as we go through that, that process. Uh, relative to the Special Education uh, Learning Center, um, there is no, um, there's no expectation that, that we'll be receiving any MSBA money for that build out at this time. Yeah, thank you. Are the councils wishing to be heard have any questions, comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, if you call the roll. Councilor Kroll. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Pelmucci. Yes. Seven members. Seven members voting in the affirmative. The matter passes. Madam Clerk, if you will let us know what is next on our agenda this evening. Next is number seven, 2020 049. Order nomination of Park and Recreation Board appointments. Nomination and election by the City Council for three members of the Park and Recreation Board. All right, let's see if we can get through this without messing it up. Mm, this is a hard one. Uh, so this is the uh, nominations for the Park and Rec Board and uh, turn it over to Councillor Phelan. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept uh, Paul Bagoli, Kevin Eisdale, and Thomas Lester to the Quincy Park and Rec Board. Pretty sure we can't do it like that. Appreciate the initiative. I think what we have to do is open it up for nominations, vote okay. on one, uh, three separate votes for three separate positions. Okay. And the way in which you have to vote is to say the individual's name. So what I'll do is there are three positions open. For the first position, I will open up nominations. Do any councilors have any nominees? Councilor Fahey. Paul Bagoli. Paul Bagoli. Do I hear anybody else? Any other nominations? Seeing none, I will we'll close, close nominations. Uh, Madam Clerk. 
And again, uh, you must say the person's name if you intend to vote for them. And what if, what if you don't? What if you don't want to vote for them, what do you say? No? Nay. nay. OK. Got that? So you don't want to vote for Paul, you say nay. You want to vote for Paul, you say Paul Brigoli. Madam Clerk. Councilor Kroll. Paul Brigoli. Councilor DeBona. Paul Brigoli. Councilor Harris. Paul Brigoli. Councilor Mahoney. Paul Brigoli. Councilor McCarthy. Paul Brigoli. Councilor Phelan. Paul Brigoli. President Palmucci. Paul Brigoli. Seven members. Seven members. Paul Brigoli takes seat number one. Okay, uh, I'll open up uh, nominations for the second uh, appointment to the Parks and Rec Board. Do I hear any Councilor Phelan? Kevin, um, I, I nominate Kevin Isdale. All right. Um, I, Councilor Phelan nominates Kevin Isdale. Do I hear any other nominations? Seeing none, I will close nominations and Again, to vote in the affirmative, you say Kevin Esdale. If you don't want to support Kevin Esdale, you say no. Madam Clerk. Council Crow. Kevin Esdale. Council DeBona. Kevin Esdale. Council Harris. Kevin Esdale. Council Mahoney. Kevin Esdale. Council McCarthy. Kevin Esdale. Council Phelan. Kevin Esdale. President Pomochi. Kevin Esdale. Seven members. Seven members. Kevin Esdale having been appointed to the Board, uh, last but certainly not least, we have a third position. Do I have any nominees, Councillor Phelan? I'd like to nominate Thomas Lester. Councillor Phelan has nominated Thomas Lester. Do I have any other nominations? Seeing none, I will close nominations. Madam Clerk, if you will read. Councillor Crow. Thomas Lester. Councillor DeBona. Thomas Lester. Councillor Harris. Thomas Lester. Councillor Mahoney. Thomas Lester. Councillor McCarthy. Tom Lester. Council Phelan. Thomas Lester. President Pomucci. Thomas Lester. Seven members. All right, look at that. We got through it. Very good. Yes, Mr. Crow. Acting President, may I be uh, recorded in the affirmative on items two, three, and four, which I believe all took action this evening? Yes, they did. They all passed, but we will certainly note your uh, affirmative vote Appreciate on. Appreciate your indulgence. Those. Kindly welcome, Councilor Carroll. Uh, Madam Clerk. Next on the agenda. Number eight, 2020-050. Order home rule petition and act in the establishing a special account for the city of Quincy traffic and park and rehabilitation and improvement. Oh, this is my way of the reading. Okay. Oh, this is my matter. Um, this measure that I'm introducing tonight uh, is part of a larger uh, residence first initiative that uh, will include a series of measures over the coming weeks uh, designed to put residents of Quincy first. Uh, built on a foundation of improving quality of life and keeping Quincy affordable for Quincy residents, with increasing property values and costs of home ownership in our city, I believe we need to take action. Uh, no senior should ever have to worry about being taxed out of their home, and I know my fellow uh, ward counselors and at-large counselors hear this all the time from folks. Uh, it's something that the, our seniors are very nervous about. Um, I will offer at least two measures that seek to address those uh, affordability concerns specifically. Uh, first, a residential tax, tax discount for any resident who owns and lives in the city of Quincy. Uh, the second will seek to tax the largest apartment buildings in the city as commercial properties, thus lessening the residential tax, uh, the residential burden on the residential taxpayer. Uh, development uh, should be serving as a catalyst to improve residents' quality of life. Residents need to get more from the, from the transformative development that's occurring in our city. It can't just be more traffic and congestion for existing residents. Uh, as part of this Residents First initiative tonight, I'm introducing legislation to create a fund to improve traffic conditions and pedestrian safety across our city. Uh, that's the measure that's before you currently. Uh, this fund will be paid for by imposing a fee on all development in the city. We must use this development and this opportunity to improve our traffic conditions and road safety to benefit the residents who already live here in our city. Development isn't a bad thing. It's, in one essence, it's further proof that Quincy is a city on the rise, but we owe it to current residents and their children who live here now to make sure they benefit from this development. Quincy's future is bright and can be made even brighter through development. That's why I'll introduce legislation to explore charging developers a linkage fee that could be used to send Quincy and North Quincy High School graduates to Quincy College for free. Let our future generations benefit from this exciting time in Quincy's history. Development only works when existing residents benefit. 
The Residence First initiative will seek new ways to keep Quincy affordable and improve our residents' quality of life. This legislation tonight is the first step, and I hope it will gain your support. I ask that Council Order 2020-50 be referred to the Ordinance Committee for a full hearing on the merits at a future meeting. Do I have a second? Councilor Phelan seconds. Thank you. We'll have that uh, matter referred to committee. Thank you. Next on the agenda. Number nine, 2020-051, ordinance amending Title V business license and regulations adding section 5.06. This is mine as well. Uh, do you want to speak on this? You want me to speak on this? Do we already speak on this? No, we have not. Okay. So, uh, do you want to tell people what's going on? I would be happy to. Sure. Um, this is uh, for business certificates in our city. Um, the city clerk is the granting authority. We do already have an establishment under Mass General Law, Chapter 110, Section 5, about people conducting business in our city. We also have 5.0620 of an application in a fee. And I'm hoping um, to add to that 5.06.30 qualification modification <laughs> denial of revocation. Certificates issued under this section shall be subject to qualification, modification, denial, or revocation of the sole discretion of the city clerk. And this comes um, as um, we are growing and we are um, moving forward in our city. And if anyone breaks a city ordinance or a law, that the city clerk may revoke or suspend the business certificate without pressing charges in court. And if I could follow up on that, this, um, yes, it, thank you. It, I wouldn't call it a loophole, but what it does is it beefs up the city clerk's authority. Um, the business certificates are an important, they play an important function uh, for any business in the city. Uh, namely, you need to have a business certificate to get a bank account. That's probably where when people show up most to the clerk's office to say, I need a business certificate, because they tried to open up a bank account uh, for their business and they couldn't without a certificate. But what this uh, allows the city clerk to do is use some discretion um, in terms of denying or revoking a business permit, a business certificate for a particular business, and that would include if, you know, say they're in violation of the blight ordinance, yet there is no formal legal action against them in court. They've just been cited numerous times. Well, when their business certificate comes up for renewal or at the clerk's discretion, they could be revoked or denied renewal, which is just another um, way in which the city can enforce our existing ordinances uh, upon businesses. Any Councilor, uh, any Councilor Harris? I'd like to, um, is this being referred? But if not, it's being referred, okay. We're going to refer this to ordinance. ordinance. Yeah, we have to advertise it. Very yep. good. Yeah, and I support it. You know, a thousand percent with some of the uh, issues we have in Ward Six with yep. certain businesses that just don't pay attention to the rules. Yep. And Thank unfortunately, you. it's you know, it's uh, as Jay Duca always says that they write citations, and ninety-seven percent of the of the things that they cite, you know, the the, the uh, bad behavior that they're citing someone on gets cleaned up. And the ones that we all come to right. work on, all our counselors in the city and neighbors, uh, you know, it, it, it really gets them all worked up. It's those three percent that don't listen. And what this does is gives us one more op uh, one more uh, way in which to uh, gain compliance from those three percent that are a problem. So, uh, Councilor Harris makes a motion to refer to the ordinance committee uh, and advertise. Do I hear a second? Second, Council Curl seconds. We don't, this is, we just vote on this, right? We don't, all those in favor? All those opposed? All those with no opinion? All right, ayes have it. Matter gets referred to ordinance and for advertisement. Madam Clerk, what is next on our agenda? Number 10, 2020-052, an ordinance amending Title 13 Public Service Chapter 13.12 Utility Small Cell. Be it or Wave the reading. Yes. Anybody want to be heard on this? Anybody want to do anything with this? Somebody want to refer it to ordinance? Councilor Harris. Uh, is, is, uh, my question is uh, to the solicitor. Is If you're familiar with what we received, did everybody receive this in the mail today? Yeah. Right, so this is what they're talking about, correct? I have no I idea. I definitely I need this to go, we need this to go into ordinance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
please. I'll take that as a motion to uh, refer yes. to ordinance. So I hear yes. a second. Councilor McCarthy seconds. All those in favor of referring this matter to the Ordinance Committee in Advertising. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The matter will get referred to Ordinance and uh, Advertising. Number 11, Madam Clark, tell us what it is. 2020-053, a gift for $2,900 for various donors for DF. All right. Councillor Harris, look at you. Now you're doing all the work tonight. All the heavy lifting over there, huh? No. All right, Councillor Harris, what have you to say? We'd like to... These uh, guys over here, they're doing nothing. Just along for the ride. Make a motion yes. to approve and send a letter. Of thank you. Motion approved by Councillor Harris. We're here a second. Councillor DeBonis. All right, here he is. He's after it. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. We'll uh, accept that money and send a letter of thanks. Okay, number 12, Madam Clerk. 2020-054, a resolved city ongoing opiate legislation update. Oh, wave the reading. This is mine as well. Um, this is a, let me see what it says here. I don't know. Uh, you remember, yeah, whatever. Uh, you may remember last session, I believe, we unanimously uh, passed a resolution, essentially, uh, well, unanimously passed a resolution calling on the mayor to reject the settlement that was offered by the, uh, the, the drug, uh, the opioid drug creators, makers, distributors. Uh, the city is engaged in a lawsuit under the mayor's direction uh, to seek monetary damages uh, for the crippling effects that have occurred due to the opioid crisis. What this resolution does is uh, ask for an update. See how that's going, see what's going on um, with uh, that lawsuit and uh, the settlement offer that's been made. I think we, this body unanimously expressed the uh, sentiment that we don't want their blood money. We would rather, uh, we would rather their practices, their predatory practices uh, come out and uh, be reviewed by the public. It, the, the things that they did should come to the light. Um, and that's the only way that we can prevent tragedies like that from happening in the future. If they just got away with it by writing a check, nothing would ever be fixed. So um, do I have a motion? Oh, no, we're going to we're going to pass this. Um, do I hear a motion to adopt this resolution and also refer it to the Public Safety Committee? Anybody? Councilor Phelan, uh, any second? These guys. Any second? Yes. Anyone? Bueller? Yeah, no, I know, right? Uh, Councillor Harris. Um, so this matter passes. We'll send the resolution to the mayor, refer it to the Public Safety Committee. Uh, perhaps, uh, and I'll talk to uh, President Liang about putting this on the, uh, maybe the next council agenda or one in the future. Perhaps we can also get that update, um, Mr. Walker, about um, DARE. And we talked about that, what the money that we send to DARE, uh, what that produces. It might be a good time to, to do it at the same time. Okay. Oh, I actually have to vote on it? Vote yeah, well, it's, it's, it was my measure, so I just unanimously. Uh, all right, all those in favor, say aye. All those opposed? All right, matter passes. Madam Clerk, number 12, uh, number 13. 2020-055, resolved, seeking adi additional information on proposed public safety headquarters park. All right, wave the reading. Uh, this is a resolve introduced by myself, Councillor Liang, and Councillor Mahoney, uh, seeking additional information related to the proposed uh, park or open space uh, area uh, that is part of the mayor's proposal for a new public safety headquarters. Well, Councillor uh, Mahoney, do you want to be heard on this at all? Pardon? Do you want to be heard on this at all? Yeah. Do you want to say something about this? Yeah. yeah sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I just, I'm, I'm in favor, of, I'm obviously on this with you, but, I, but I'm in favor of this because I think, again, this is one of those things where it was presented to us and there's this large park that's in front of the proposed station that seems to be, um, it's not accessible really by anybody. It's a high traffic area. Um, and I think we can do better for the taxpayers of the city of Quincy and, and maybe have them come back and do a, a better present, presentation as to why it's necessary to go in that direction. And it could potentially um, offset if we do it in a different way the cost of this project and a much needed project that's to happen here in the city of Quincy. If we have to do it in both ways, provide a service to the people who work in those buildings, but also provide a reasonable outcome for the taxpayers of the city of Quincy. Thank you. Thank you, and I, I, I would agree with that sentiment too. I, I, it's not about, um, we all support the new public safety headquarters, but this is about uh, seeing if we can trim the costs of that, uh, the expense of that to the taxpayer down some. Um, 
you want to make a motion to um, pass and refer to the ordinance committee? Okay, may I have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? All those opposed? All right, the matter passes. We'll send that to the mayor uh, and also refer, refer to the ordinance committee. Number 14. Number 14, 2020-017, resolve on the mid-year project updates public buildings. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mr. Hines, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, councilors, for having me. I look forward to sharing with you all the good works of my team. All right. I, I will sit and let you well, pontificate. I, I, as much as I'd like to brag, I won't bore you with reading off the 21 pages of projects that have been done. Uh, it was supplied to the council uh, last week. Um, I would note that over 10 pages of, of this 21 pages is uh, school building related. Uh, and there's a, a number of initiatives there. Um, we're working to improve security in the buildings, reconfiguring entrances, relocating offices, North Quincy High particularly, there's a design uh, in the works now to, to move the main office and the principal's office to the first floor at the front lobby. Um, hardware and lock upgrades throughout. Uh, another uh, area of uh, concentration that we do are the energy efficiencies. You'll see a number of the projects in this listing have to do with uh, recommissioning or retro recommissioning, the buzzword for the building uh, control systems. We spent a fortune at the Thomas Crane Library um, and uh, the Point Webster Middle School and the uh, Clifford Marshall Schools, uh, but each one of those projects have huge environmental impact and dollar impact to the taxpayers each year going forward uh, in the cost uh, savings for energy and uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, I'm, I'm happy to say that all of our projects are, uh, are well funded with the support of the council and the mayor's office and, uh, and actively going forward. There's a number of projects that are under design with engaged engineering and architectural firms uh, as part of our last ask on the um, CIP plan. There's a significant uh, development as well. Last year, uh, Governor Baker signed a measure that made all municipal employees subject to the uh, federal standards under the OSHA Act, the Employer Safety and Protection Programs. Uh, and it's really kind of a daunting overlay on everything we do uh, in all city departments, but mine particularly, where we have so many tradespersons uh, working with power tools and such and driving vehicles and repetitive motion. Uh, in fact, we have March 10th, we are cooperating with the Department of uh, Public Works, TPAL, and the Parks and Cemetery, and we're having a joint training session put on by uh, a firm that my department engaged uh, in training on the use of tools uh, in a safe and efficient manner, uh, both to be compliant with the law and to, uh, to keep our people safe. Um, so if there's any particular project that was listed, uh, anything that's not listed, if anyone wants to ask a question, I'd be happy to entertain it. So is there anything to ask, say? Council McCarthy? Uh, just a plug for Mr. Hines in regards to, to the work that you, know, you, you guys have accomplished. Uh, remember years ago, uh, when we didn't have the public buildings department and we were kind of putting it together with Band-Aid effect out of the school department, um, it was tough to get things done. And, and the creation of the, of the department and the work that's being done, uh, and I can speak for Athen and Howe, I know you've done, I've got a lot of work lined up there, Paul, that's going on, a lot of work at Broad Meadows. Mm -hmm. uh, just to name a few down there, uh, it's been tremendous improvement on um, on schools that 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 needed it, uh, especially the older schools. You guys done a uh, superlative job on uh, on on all those buildings, and I'll just focus in on the on the schools because I know you have quite a few public buildings. Um, but um, just want to say thank you. The guys have been very responsive and. Uh, uh, the uh, the list has been uh, checked off as we've gone along, and a lot of things have got accomplished. So thank you very much, Paul. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I would like to add one thing, too. One of our kind of ongoing initiatives is the removal of asbestos from the buildings, the firehouses and the schools more particular than others. 
Um, in the schools, it's more regulated under the federal, federal and state laws. In the other buildings, they're not as concerned about. Um, but with the proliferation of cancer and the different health consequences with the firemen that live in, the, in these buildings where they, a number of them are old and they do have asbestos and they do have other health issues, we're really focusing in on them. Um, I had reason to be before the Attorney General's office a couple of weeks ago uh, with regard to a particular building we have in asbestos. Um, and the Assistant Attorney General just kind of said, well, we know municipalities don't have money and they never take out asbestos. I said, hold on. You know, we've spent several hundreds of thousands of dollars over the last couple of years abating our schools and boiler rooms and firehouses. And he was really taken aback. It's just not what they're accustomed to seeing. So uh, that's another important thing I would like to point out that uh, we are keeping up with that initiative as well. Sir, Richard, Councilor Mahoney. Is that mine? Yeah. Hi, Mr. Hines. Thank you very much. Hi. Um, just tapping onto that, that's, um, was that for the water, the water as well for the abatement for the, 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 the it's some lead in the water for the, the, the that came up recently, they were, they were taken, they did in the schools too, that's something else that you did as well, right? Yes. Uh, we started that a couple of years ago and at the mayor's direction, we went to basically at that time uh, 0 0.05 parts per million when the, the standard was 15. Yeah. Uh, since that time, uh, the EPA has down down uh, set their level to, I believe it's 10, mm -hmm. but we're still half that on our initiative and our efforts. Uh, and that continues as an ongoing effort. Are you um, still working on that? Because I can remember, I thought I got a letter recently just in regards yeah. to that. So. Well, the, a letter came out from the State um, Department of Health advising of the new standards. Okay. Uh, but again, we've already, for the projects that we've done, uh, for the replacements, we are half of what the allowed new standard is. Uh, all of our fixtures are compliant with the law as it is today, uh, and we're going after and, and again lowering those standards, uh, the, lowering the levels to as our, our goal obviously is zero, um, but we're going to try to achieve as low as, as low as we can. And the mayor is directed to point point zero five pots per billion. Great. So I, I just wanted to mention that too because I know that was a big that was a, a big talking point for a while there. Yeah. So looking at your list, I, for the proposal for the new learning, um, the Learning Center 180, um, Old Colony Ave, yes. what's the status of that? Because is the hope to be moving into that building? When's the move-in date for that building? That has not been set, and that's uh, largely informed by the degree of development of the plans. Mm -hmm. um, the programming, since the initial uh, con um, think uh, thought up or, or mm -hmm. conjuring up of the plan for the building and the in the school uh, has grown um, really taking in the experts and what they want to see what has grown I'm sorry I, I'm sorry I didn't I didn't hear you what did you say has grown the the program the scale of, of what's being included in the building uh -huh. uh, the type of facilities the equipment for the students so what's the anticipated movement date for that that was um, something that was brought to us and it was rushed through um, with the with the, with the sentiment that it was going to open in the fall and um, my understanding is it was somewhat uh, fast tracked through the council owing to a requirement at the Eastern Nazarene on the purchase date. Um, it, it, it gave a sense of urgency for that, and there was a hopeful fall of 2020 occupancy, mm -hmm. but that's just not going to happen. Okay. Uh, so point, I'm asking, I'm asking, I understand they're building up the program, I'm asking as a building perspective, when will the building be ready for occupancy? I'm saying at this point, our goal is. September 2021 student occupancy. Okay. It's a significant build out of the of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, Staying in budget with what the budget was passed for the building. For the there building. hasn't been a budget passed. Um, there was a budget passed. We we passed additional money that you were going to be able to use to do some renovations. That that was never intended, to my understanding, to be the construction budget. Okay. Um, I didn't. I didn't vote for it. So, um, but in any case, that's that's one question. So, um, I'd like an update from the the in regards to this. I think it's appropriate for the um, for the council to have an update as a status of that because it was it was presented to us that there was going to be a program that would be occupied in September of 2020 for that building. So, I'd be curious to know what the status of that is and what the delay is and what the hopes are for that building. Moving on to the library, um, I was curious to know has the oops oh, sorry Council Mahoney, if I could just. Um, if I have your permission, if you don't want to, that's fine. Um, I think the mayor's representative wanted to add something about that. If you don't want to hear from him now, that's fine. I think we can continue. do it in a separate presentation. This is really just building updates. Okay. And I'll give him a chance to talk after you're done. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, if you want, he, he can. I'm just saying it's just building updates. So by all means, Mr. Walker, go at it. No, it's okay. He can. 
I'll give Ms. Chance after you're done. I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt you. That's why I asked yeah, you. I just, if, if you don't mind, because it would be easier if I just continue yeah, my flow. Go ahead. I'd be happy to, happy to comment after Mr. Walker. Absolutely. But, yep. um, and then I'll, I'll ask the auditor to actually pull up the budget, because I think there was a budget for that. But in any case, moving on to the libraries. Um, so for the main library, I didn't see that. I'm not, it could be on here, but I don't know if I see the main library, or maybe it is. Is this the back I believe page? it's the second to last page or the last page. Second to last page. Uh, maybe without being able to go through the notes, because they have a separate. Um, what's the status of, there, there's been a long going um, carpet issue at the main library. So what's yes. the status of the, the carpet? <laughs> okay. Um, with Carpets the, are big because they go into you know, state houses and mayor's offices, and then they go into libraries. So we want to know where the library carpet is. Um, with the assistance of uh, Senator Keenan, that's been an earmark to help with expenses at the library. Okay. Um, Megan Allen didn't want to uh, put that towards an ordinary expense like the carpet. Um, that's going to go to other library purposes. Uh, but the library carpet replacement in the main campus is advancing. Um, we just signed an engagement with CBT, the original architects for the building, mm -hmm. to spec the carpet. Uh, when the specifications were done a few years ago, it was a custom-made carpet, and we had a conversation that that really was not necessary. There were plenty of uh, run-of-the-mill, literally, uh, carpets and, and uh, patents and colors that would be quite appropriate for that building and be a significant cost savings. So, so it's again, not part of, it's, it's, not, it's something that you're marked for a difference. It's not done at this point. So we're hoping to get... We're going to get that done in the near future, hopefully. Yes, the CBT okay. is doing the specifications for the product. Okay, and then as far as the the high surface areas of where that carpet is, is it going to be carpeting throughout, or are you thinking of anything else, maybe too, that would have a longer longer life, like hardwood floors or tiling or anything um, other than carpeting? For the main library, many of the common and entrance areas have a, uh, a quarry product. Mm -hmm. um, so the areas that are carpeted, uh, that's part of the review of CBT because. Uh, they've done a space reuse study uh, on shifting around some uses within, this, within the footprint of the building. Uh, and what that new use for that new area would be will dictate what the floor uh, materials will be. But largely it will be carpet again because of uh, acoustical issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and carpet is fairly durable. The building is 20 years old now. Yeah. And it's come up for replacement now after 20 years. And again, the funding was, is, was identified by Senator Keenan? No, he got a $200,000 AMARC for the library. I suggest that we're not using it for the carpet. We have CIP programming for the carpet, that th those monies would be go to other purposes. And I'm sorry, so what other CIP monies is going to go for the carpet? So we don't have any money in the CIP. That's going to be an additional. No, that's in there it, from the last round of CIP. So we do have money in that. Yes. So, but it just hasn't been, it has not been. It just has not been executed on. Other, other matters came out that were more pressing with the library. Okay, so um, what about the, for the library too, is there been any um, repointing of the mortar on the library or the exterior work for the library? For the main campus, yes. The area of the uh, QATV building, Mm -hmm. had repointing and some caulking work done and waterproofing. And then on the uh, Coddington Street facade of the Cleddy building, uh, there was leaking, which allowed to go into the reading room and down into office space in the lower level. Uh, it was determined that when they did the renovation 20 years ago, they did not properly waterproof the gutter, mm -hmm. and that allowed additional leaking. Uh, that has since been patched, that gutter. It really needs to be replaced, and we have uh, part of the overall exterior survey that's happening now that would be included. Is that including the Richardson building? That's the Richardson building. That was the Clady building for those leaks. Uh, the overall specifications for the exterior upgrades and, and repairs are the Aiken, the Clady, and the Richardson. Okay. And then what about the, there's, um, there's some door damage too. The doors were had some leak and water damage, the heavy wooden doors. Are those being looked at? <laughs> That's news to me. I'm not aware of that. The doors, the entrance to the first edition. Um, there's some, there's, it looks like there might be some ordering problems and at the front doors of, if it's Coletti, the first edition, if that's what you're referring to, um, the flooring right inside the door, again, that faces to Coddington Street, not Washington, but Coddington, um, the flooring was replaced about two weeks ago. Um, for, you know, 20 years of use, it was worn out in water damage, but that has been replaced. Okay. All right. And then moving on, um, I didn't see the Greenleaf building. Is that in this package? That is there, yes. Greenleaf, Pardon? 74 Greenleaf Street? Yep. Is yes, that, it's in there. It's in. What page is that on? There's a lot of stuff in here. I know. Uh, I appreciate that, though. I ra I'd rather have it all, but I just don't. I will learn to number the pages in the future. Yeah, I know. Well, it's at the bottom. It's at the bottom. Okay. Of the page, 
One. That might be why I missed it. Two, three, four, five from the back. Five from the back. I was going forward, but. <clears throat> On the bottom, I see. I'm on. I see. Um, North Quincy Engine Two. I'm on the wrong page. Yeah, it's well after fire. Just hang on. Mine's double page. That's why. One, two. Town Hall Veterans Open to Mind. Okay, so the fire stations end, yep. and then it's one, two pages after the fire station section. The top of the page is the Adams Academy. I double, I, I, I printed both back and front, so. Okay. In any case, is the, is the garage still standing over there? At Greenleaf Street? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Wasn't that supposed to come down? Uh, it was back and forth when it was first purchased. There was consideration of taking it down. Mm -hmm. um, but then it was thought it was... It needed minimal repairs, and it was best to keep it for storage. So is it repairs done to the garage, then? It's still being yes. used? Yes, okay. that's it done. And then, um, then also, there's there's been a, the, like, tieback's been up in the building for a while. Has that been fixed? Or? The exterior skin in the, the entire building is 100% complete. It's it's finished. It's it, finished. it was tieback in the back and in some of the areas of the front for too long. Yeah. Um, some of the original siding had to come off to do the roof project. It's been a while since I went over there. I just last time I noticed yeah. it was. How when did that get complete? I'm going to say the exterior is complete a month now. So yeah, okay. yeah. So this has been. I forget when I brought this up. So it's yeah. been a while. Yeah, it, okay. it has gone on for a while, uh, but it's a historic restoration, not a mm -hmm. blowing blowout uh, rehab. So uh, we're taking our time and doing it appropriately and using it as a filler for my staff. But right, we'll, so it, we'll it was put the first run now to get it done. A hundred thousand dollar appropriation mm. for that, right? About was there it. about a hundred thousand dollars was was the budget for that multi done in house? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not aware that that was the budget. No. Okay. Was most of the cover? Was most of that done internally, or was that contract work that was? Done At or? this point, because the pressure's on, it's about a it's about a fifty fifty split. The roof, the slate roof, which we had to do because of the historic registration, that was done by contractors. Now the the exterior siding was done by contractors because it was lead based paint, uh, and inside is largely mixed. Probably most of the inside has been in house. Okay. And then just touching on, on the schools, you do do a ton of work in the schools, and, um, and that's much appreciated. I know that the list comes from, is, are, there, are, there, are these identified by the school committee as to what's being done? I know it's done in the school, and when they do the, the, the reporting of the, um, the principals come and do the reports as to what's needed, but you know, is, it, is it the school committee that makes the decisions, or is it the city side that makes the decisions as to what's going to be handled? Um, I do pull and inform myself with the facility improvement plans from, from the website from each school. Um, and then I have in my mind what needs to be done in the buildings by going through and doing a survey. Um, I kind of focus on public safety and public health issues. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly, there's never a principal that's afraid to pull me aside and ask for a particular project, and we always try to accommodate them. Uh, and it's a very, very rare occasion that we don't. Yeah, it's hard uh, to say no to the principals. Right? Yeah, it's, it's almost like you want to stay out of the building. <laughs> um, you know, some, some principals ask for having their floors replaced, but I know that those floors aren't asbestos, and there's a school that does have asbestos. I'm going to do the asbestos one first. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in that regard, I've got to disappoint some, yeah. but it's really, you know, for, for valid reason. I just know that there's a lot of work that's being done. I do totally appreciate all the work that's being done throughout the city. So when I'm looking to, I notice that there's a ton, which is great, of the fire headquarters, the headquarters and engine two and, and so on and so forth. A lot of work that's being done. Is any pointing being done to some of those buildings? Because I know there's a lot of leakage in those buildings. And those are things, I mean, as much as I might think, you might think I don't want to buy the, I do. I want to make sure that people are equipped and are safe in our buildings. But also these buildings are they haven't really been touched in a really long time. So I'm just curious because um, sometimes when I drive by, they just look like they just, it's, it, it's, there's no other way. I feel it's, it's one of those things you feel bad that they're, that they're not taken care of, shameful in some ways that it's been, but I understand it comes down to budget. So yep. pointing in the buildings, I know like the Ward 4 um, fire station is, it was in need of some work. Um, I saw that was on here, so I'm glad yeah. to see it. Mostly each, interior. Each one stuff of the fire right? stations where there was exterior masonry pointing and waterproofing required, that's been done. Mm -hmm. uh, so the brick pointing, so yes. Uh, yeah. A number, House Neck, West Quincy, Quincy Point have had roof repairs. Each one of them really needs new roofs, but yeah. for the time being, we've fixed them to stop the leaks, mm -hmm. but they're still past their intended ages. Um, Windows are a big one, um, but you'll see, also see on the report there, 
that we've built out uh, shower rooms in the truck bays of a couple of the buildings, and we're still going forward with that program. Uh, again, for the cancer concerns with the firefighters, uh, these rooms, generally the ones that we've done so far, uh, are right in the truck bay, yeah. carved out space with the, uh, with the assistance of the house captains and the chief, um, and built multi-person you know, gang showers of individual stalls, and then separate for other gender, um, and bathroom and laundry facilities in those spaces um, so that they don't go in and contaminate the living space of the building. Everything is done right there. That's something that came out of an appropriation by the council mm -hmm. and the mayor's office for the extractors and the, and the turnout gear dryers. Right. The thought was, well, what good's doing that if they're walking upstairs dirty? You're still contaminating the building. Mm -hmm. um, so it came of that. So money that had originally, you know, three years ago, it was in the CIP for windows and door replacements, things like that, mm -hmm. have with the, you know, encouragement of the chief's office been repurposed to do these rooms. Okay. Um, so, so those washers, those those high wash efficiency, those wash machines that were purchased to, to yeah. wash those, those are in the first floor, they're not on the second floor in all of them, or just some of them? Uh, the ones that the, the shower rooms are built are on truck bays, and that's where they are. Okay. Um, Quincy Point, West Quincy, and uh, House Neck, mm -hmm. and Wollaston, the house captains have asked that they be in the basement, the shower rooms and the, and the extractors, mm -hmm. so that's where they'll be built. But they're not in the upstairs, they're at least, they're not in the living quarters. They're, they're not the in the living quarters. They're down in what's currently basement. So we're moving steam pipes and all that stuff now to accommodate that. Uh, engine 7 and, and Engine 8, that's Quantum and G-Town, um, they're on slab-on-grade truck bays. They'll be on the, on the truck bay. Um, but we're trying to sequence the construction of these rooms based upon the, the activity of the houses. Mm -hmm. So how far are you in the completion of getting them all equipped? Are they done? Well, it's, all the washers are procured. They're not all on site. In fact, we, we spoke with the chiefs last week. Um, if the, the buildings that are the, the fire stations that are into the building cycle of the shower rooms, mm -hmm. we're going to install the extractors and the dryers now. And then when we get to it, move them out of the way, do the construction, put them back so that they at least have the benefit of those washers for the time being. Uh, Quincy Point and West Quincy are the ones that right now are actively going into construction. Um, we've temporarily relocated the, the equipment that they had, the washing equipment. Uh, but we're not putting the new ones in yet because they have to be bolted down to the floor, and it's a significant installation issue. Okay. Is there an um, assessment of each of the, the fire headquarters, just out of curiosity, to the status of the buildings? I know that you've done a lot of work in them, but I know that they, they haven't been touched in a really long time, so I was just curious to know, like, what other work has to be done to make them, you know, fully secure and, and, and pointed and, you know, not only just, you know, up to speed with that, but also make them... Look, because they're beautiful buildings, but they've they've just been um, not touched in a long time, and they seem to be the last on the list always. But they, I, I'm glad to see them. I'm glad to see so much has gone into them. But I'm also curious to know what's the status of the other repairs that need to be done. Yeah, we've, uh, I agree with you on that. They it's almost since they were built, they weren't touched. Mm -hmm. The fire crews themselves would do maintenance, but it was never a comprehensive program. Mm -hmm. uh, there has at times been replacement doors and windows, but you know, too often they buy the cheapest things, and I have mm -hmm. to do them again. Right. Um, but the exterior integrity was important because of water issues and mold, so we've advanced them. Um, we've done electrical upgrades. You know, some of the firehouses still had to screw in fuses. You know, we've replaced those panels, upgraded them to code. Which is ironic because you don't want them in homes. Yes, But yet we I know. have them in the fire department. Yes, so. exactly. Um, Engine 8, all the, fire, all the main distribution panel and all the electrical equipment was in the basement, and it was below floodplain and has gone underwater twice and no one ever replaced them. They just let them dry out and use them. Oh we brought them upstairs. They're on the main floor now. They've been replaced. We've, we've removed all the stuff that's in the basement. So um, we are looking at I mean, Then we've done some quick fix things. We've done some ceiling tile replacements and painting just to brighten the place up and, and, and give it a cleaner look and feel for the, for the, uh, the crews. Um, we have undertaken, the again, the abatement uh, beginning in those buildings. We're doing floor tiles. We're doing pipes. Yeah. I think all heating pipes are done except for headquarters. Um, and now we're advancing the floors. Uh, there's leaks, the whole window wall over the truck bay and engine two, North Quincy leaks. Yeah. I um, think what would be beneficial for the council, I mean, we could go through all this, but I think what would be really beneficial, and this is one of the things I was hoping to get from meetings like this, is to have a further understanding of, of areas of our city that are in need of, of repair, not just when the CIPs come before us, but to really have a a real understanding of, of buildings. We have a lot of buildings we have to take care of. We talk about them often. It comes up in capital improvement plans when we're putting money towards it. And much like um, the DBW earlier when we were speaking about um, some phases for um, 
MWRA money, but but when we're talking about that, tying, tying those things together so that we can understand what the needs are and what the plans are for going forward and not waiting for, um, you know, just the understanding, because there's, there's a dire need for certain things to happen, but yet sometimes we don't know what those are until they become an emergency. But I do know um, we talk a lot about the, you know, the police and fire headquarters that are being developed, but there's, you know, multiple engine stations that have gone neglected throughout the years, and I'm glad to see this again, but it would be, it would be helpful to know some of those areas that, that need to be touched to bring, I'm glad to hear that you're bringing them up to code as far as electrical outlets, and then also making sure that they're not, they're, they're not in a flood zone, that the ones that are in the, underneath that shouldn't be are being moved, those are the first things that should be taken care of, but what other things need to be taken care of? That would be helpful too. Not that we have the money to do everything all at once, but it's also just You couldn't beneficial. do it all at once. It's too much. You, you couldn't. But it's yeah. beneficial as it, for a community to know what, what, we've been, what we have done, what we've invested, what we've accomplished, and what the goals are to go next because um, we have to prioritize these things as well. Yeah. Um, but we don't get to know that because we often just talk about specific, the surface of things, and it'd be helpful to know the, the depth of what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Yeah. At this point, I'd like to um, go back to the old colony building and what was approved. I think what was approved, and, and it can be correct if I'm wrong, but I think the purchase of the building along with some additional monies were approved for the build outs that you're doing currently for the building to get it ready for potentially occupancy from the schools. In September of 2020, the program was being built out simultaneously at the same time and there's no, pro there's no, there's no program that, that was on hand. It was being built out by the administration's office with the intentions that there'd be additional monies coming forward, but that the building was, the program was supposedly gonna be built out and ready for 2020, September 2020. That was the aggressive reason why we were moving so fast with this. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over if it's okay with you, Council, uh, council President or Council. Yeah, whatever. To, uh, to move over to Mr. Walker. Okay, Mr. Walker. Through you, Mr. President, just to clarify, uh, Mr. Hines stood up here at that meeting when we purchased the property and said there would be a subsequent budget for the full build-out of Eastern Nazarene College. There was nothing in that order that evening that suggested that was going to be the full amount. There is some additional money in there beyond the purchase price, but that was for stuff that we knew right off the bat that would need to get done. Uh, he st stood at that podium and said there would be a budget before this body for the full build-out. Uh, relative to the timing of the sale, uh, Commissioner Hines was again correct that that was entirely due to the, to the necessity of Eastern Nazarene to move quickly with the negotiation. That was also part of our presentation at that original meeting. The 2020 date was discussed initially um, when it was first kicked around. Uh, it quickly became evident that that was not going to be possible and that was also discussed at that meeting and the superintendent is quoted in the newspaper the following day saying September 21 was going to be the date. So just so there's no confusion, thank you. So do we have any do we have any understanding or any idea of what the cost of the build out was going to be because one of the other things that was presented at that meeting was the cost savings that we were going to have for this program. So again, I just want to be clear that we and the purchase the actual purchase price for the building because we we put some money aside for the the bond that was being created for a purchase of a building as well as work that needed to be done and that work that was being done I I, I was underneath the impression was to establish the building mm -hmm. in preparation for this program to go into and then the program would be developed out and any additional monies would come back before us for that. So I just, I'm just curious to know what the additional, where we, we, where we stand as far as what the program is and what our anticipated cost is to put that program in. Because uh, there was a lot of promises of how much it was going to save when we don't have a program or a building that's built out. So No, I, I think the mayor and I think uh, this community uh, will stand firmly behind the concept of creating a special education learning center to keep young people in Quincy. Uh, what was said that evening has not changed in any way, shape, or form. Uh, that we asked and received a certain amount of money to purchase the building and an additional amount to begin uh, work that needed to be done. Uh, but with the caveat uh, that was said here multiple times at that meeting, that we would be back before this body with a full budget for the program and for the build out. Before budget. I'm sorry, so before, when are you going to be back before that? Because it's when, 20, so 2020 is, is um, we're here in 2020, so you're saying 2020, 2020 was never the, well, you're 2020, going to have to come back. Was, 2020, 2020 was, was, was kicked too. around originally, but at that meeting, at that night, it was no surprise to anyone. It's not coming as a surprise. 2021 has been the working date since, basically since we've been beginning. Yes, 2020 was kicked around, mm -hmm. but 2021, since Paul and the team started digging into the needs and working with the folks of the school department and what the needs were going to be, 2021, almost immediately, 
became the more realistic target. Uh, and again, that was something that has been discussed publicly. It's been discussed at the school committee. It's been in front of this body. It's been talked about. We're this in March not, of 2020. So I, I guess because we're in March of 2020, I'm just I'm asking. You're a year and a half out from that now 2021 date. So what's the status of it? So, Mr. Hines has been working quite hard with his team putting it together. I know we have uh, RFQs out in, on the street relative to uh, sure, some yeah. components of it. Um, when and as soon as that process is done and when we're ready to come back for the full package, we'll be before this body for the full package. Thank you. Part of that, too, is we're hoping to proceed with the construction aspect under Chapter 149A, the construct, construction manager at risk, much like we did at Southwest. Uh, that allows us to go out early to bid for certain segments of the work, uh, particularly uh, focusing on the elevator requirements um, because of the long lead time for them. So Mr. Walker is correct. There's an OPM on the street, uh, RFQ for OPM, um, for the uh, owner's project manager. Uh, that'll be followed by request through the council to authorize using the Chapter 149A procurement process, which then has to have approval by the Attorney General's office. So there's a statutory uh, structure for that that will be before the council for as well. Thank you, Ms. Hines. Any other, were you done? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other councilors having questions? Councilor Bone? Just, just real quick to elaborate a little bit on, thank you, Mr. Um, Chairman. Just to elaborate real quick on the, um, the timeline of um, that particular uh, building uh, on Old Colony, um, I did attend that meeting. And um, it was the day after the election. It was actually November 6th. It was the right in the next day. And one, one of the things that was really stressed by Mr. Hines was um, the fact that we might not be able, to, if, if, we, if we try to speed track this, we might not be able to get back in this building to do some of the other repairs. And the thing was that the sentiment around the room that was well attended was, we don't want to be coming into the facility or the, or the building and disrupting the kids that are already in the classroom. So we didn't, he had stressed that very good to, to, the, to the entire audience that once we get in there, we want to do this right the very first time so we don't have to come back um, down the road while the children are inside the schools and we want this 24-7 you know, care um, for the kids and not have to go back into the facility. And that was stressed very well with um, you know, Superintendent DeCristofaro and the team uh, of staff, um, Aaron Perkins and the crew. So, I mean, he did kind of stress that. I got the sentiment from the audience that, I mean, I don't think it's a good environment to go back into the school and have to repair something or patch something up that doesn't, wasn't done right. So if we have to take a little bit more time to get this done correctly, I think it'd be more beneficial than coming in and disrupting the children. So, I mean, that was what I got from the meeting that night. And um, you even said that possibly the timeline could be actually um, January of 2021, um, 2022. It could be even that far out. So to push it up to September 2021, is that what we're looking for, Ms. Times? That would be great. Uh, but uh, Councilor Mahoney is right, that's very aggressive as well. Yeah. There's su substantial renovations at the request of the school department for this programming. And you're right, to have it done and out of there, don't go back in for anything um, because it is a 12-month program. That, that hope to see that September 2021 because that would be the part of the, the beginning of the fall semester school year. So I've got a lot of pressure on me for that one. So I know, I know um, you're going to have to do some uh, magic, Mr. Hines, and um, I know you can do it. I know that. Oh, don't set me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is a much needed, much needed uh, facility. Uh, for our 200 plus children that um, have, you know, special needs. So I'm looking forward to it. I, um, uh, I'm, I'm glad we're moving forward with it. We'll get to the funding part of it. We'll come fr back in front of this body and we'll figure it all out. But um, I want to thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Um, you have a big undertaking doing all these buildings across the city. So thank you for the punchline and all the, um, um, everything that you did in this packet because I, now I can know where, what you, what's been done. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor DeBona. Uh, and I just remind the councilors that uh, this particular that particular project is not subject to the uh, resolution 2020-017. So we should we can obviously talk about it because Mr. Hines is here to a to a limited extent, but um, it can't be the crux of what we're discussing tonight. Um, Councilor Kroll, you had. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Acting President. You look good up there. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Uh, through you to Mr. Hines. Mr. Hines, good evening. How are you? Good evening, Councilor. 
I'm I know we uh, we have a lot of dialogue back and forth, and you know, as I kind of look around the well, I know that there's some, um, you know, we're all pretty aggressive uh, in sort of advocating for our causes. And I look at your workflow here that you presented to us, and um, I can't help but come up with the question of like, how overwhelmed are you? <laughs> yeah, the oh, walk is shaking his head. <laughs> No, it's a question. It's, manageable. it's a lot of work, but it's manageable. They have a great team. Um, yeah, they work I mean, hard. You started a low bar, too, right? You're easily overwhelmed. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So. <laughs> I let the look good comment go. Come on. So um, you feel you have, I mean, I didn't particularly count all the projects in this, uh, in this packet. You said you had 21 completed. When you think about your resources internally, do you feel that you have enough, I guess, enough resources to be effective? And I'm going to go somewhere with this question. I just kind of want to hear. Yeah, no, I, at this time, on. I think we do. Um, we do do a lot. Everyone works very hard. Um, the in-house trades people, the, that department, they work very hard to keep things together, to maintain the buildings. And to a large extent, they go well beyond that. And they do new construction. They help in, to a great extent to Greenlee Street. Um, build out of things in Coddington, different things. So they're very helpful, very eager to help, and they're very skilled at what they do. Um, but we also put a number of uh, trades contracts out. We have on-call trades, so plumbing, electric, mechanical, carpentry. Um, so we've complied with procurement in short order. Um, they have, when they did responded to those contracts for the RFPs, they had to give us their pricing at that time. Uh, and in a number of the trades, I, I awarded multiple contracts. So I, like say, I've got three roofers. So I get the specifications for one of our designers. I give all three of them, give me a best price. So even though I've fully complied with procurement already, I'm still getting the best price out of the three that we've gotten. Um, so having that much of the procurement behind us helps but us. Isn't the there a threshold, like uh, monetarily, that if any project's above X, I want to say it's $10,000 has to go out to bid? It, it, well, it does, but we've, we've done that. And this, it's called the on-call or the house doctor program, and it's blessed by the attorney general's office and the inspector general. Um, and, and the caps in the, that program is $1.5 million. So I can use an on-call contract up to a $1.5 million project. Other um, than that, so after that, that, I would bid it directly. Then you're subject to procurement yeah. guidelines yep. driven by the state. Driven by the state. We're fully compliant right. with them. very cognizant. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to learn prevailing more Prevailing wages about. as well. So back to kind of the overwhelming uh, question that I had asked, like, who's managing all these projects? Uh, well, ultimately me. Uh, there's Walter, oh, there's that, Vic, there's other I guys and other people in the department that answer to me, and they've, we assigned out different aspects of different jobs to them. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it all falls on me. Project manager? or Yeah, yeah. There, is there Gary kind of Cunniff, Don Martin, uh, Walter McDonald, Mick Monaghan. Um, yeah, I, it, it works well. There's a lot of work, but again, we wouldn't, you couldn't do all the work at once because we're using the buildings, and that's one of the issues. So we're kind of on vacations and periods that we have an opportunity advancing the project at Broad Meadows. We did a big project last week during vacation. Get in, get it done, cleaned it up, and get out. Uh, when before that wouldn't have been done. It all would have been pushed off to the summer. But that doesn't work into our schedule for designing the, the system in order to be able to build this summer. Um, so we need to be more creative in, uh, you know, scheduling things and facing things better. Well, I know but, that one of the challenges we had down in, uh, down the point was the Cliff Marshall HVAC system. And, you know, obviously that was something that I believe the team tackled during summer break, right? Because you had more access to yeah, the lion's share that was over summer break, the running of all the wires. It was literally miles of wire run for the building. Um, but then the components and the equipment and the valve work continued through the school year uh, and is actually just finishing up now. Right. And I ask you these questions because I just want to get an understanding of what's going on internally. We see what we see when, you know, a memo or a packet is distributed to us. We hear what we hear when we interact with you on a daily basis. But I think it's, it's important as we contemplate, you know, the, the, the state of the city or sort of what direction we're moving in. Um, that we, as a city council, have a pretty good pulse on what's going on internally with the uh, with the department, and 
I think it was a, an article published. It might have been Commonwealth Magazine. It might have been on Mass Live, but I, I, I recall reading it in, in the not too distant past. And um, there were other cities and towns talking about, you know, over time how they just had fell so far behind on maintaining municipal assets. And I remember when we started to introduce this uh, this notion of capital improvement plans. I had my reservations. I know Council Palmucci and I continuously advocated for, you know, a, uh, a solid five-year capital plan so that we could help kind of connect the project to the dollar amount and be able to translate that in real time, uh, how that affects the tax base, right? Because these capital improvement plans are financed essentially through bond authorizations that roll themselves back to the general fund in some capacity mm -hmm. or the debt schedule. Um, so hopefully that's still a work in progress, I, I, I would assume. I know that uh, marked out the door. <laughs> your team's uh, up here every year asking you know, for resources. And I'm not, not condemning it uh, yeah. by any stretch of the matter. Like I said, there's other cities and towns out there that are clamoring, um, knowing that they're, you know, some of their municipal buildings are, are literally falling apart. So yeah. much like a home, I know, uh, you know a city-owned building or a school or a library, I mean, they all have to, uh, they have, to have a maintenance schedule that's appropriate for you know, that point in time. Um, so, you know, I also read here too the Point Webster, and one of the things that actually broke my heart as I started to learn about it uh, through conversations with some, um, you know, some internal folks at Point Webster was the whole locker situation. Kids sharing lockers, kids not having secure lockers. Um, my assessment based on what I read here now, um, I thought for some reason that that installation process was going to take place over February vacation. That, that was the hope, that was the goal, as it was stated. Um, but the production, uh, the, the drag on production by the company couldn't meet so that. it's a manufacturing issue? Yep. So am I to come to the conclusion that when this particular work item is completed, that everybody in Point Webster Middle School will have their own locker that locks and is, yes. uh, is they're is, able to safely um, yep. you know, store their belongings? There's two generations of lockers in that building. Uh, the history of the building is... The, it was the Daniel Webster Elementary School. Familiar. And, and then they built yeah. the, the junior high behind it. So there's two different ages of lockers. Um, the newer lockers, the ones that were installed in the elementary school at the renovation 20 years ago, are in, in good shape. The locking mechanisms are bad. They are being re repaired and replaced, the locking mechanisms, but the lockers themselves are fine. And what was built as the junior high, the, the lockers are junk. They're going and being completely so the replaced. the Daniel Webster locking, locker system was still in play? The Daniel Webster building didn't have lockers, so lockers were put in 20 years ago at the renovation. So those lockers were having the hardware repaired and replaced now, but the locker boxes themselves are fine. By and large, there's some that are being replaced. It's the wholesale replacement in the Point Junior High School building that it's, by and large, it's, that's a complete rip out and replacement. Just due to age. Just age, yeah. Essentially. Yeah, they, they weren't replaced with the renovation 20 years ago. They're just spray painted. And my final question, and you know you weren't going to evade the podium this evening without uh, the four of a clubhouse uh, us. conversation that we've been having for quite some time now. And, and I just want to, like, point out the fact you talk about having, like, talented in-house skilled workers. Like, go by the four of a clubhouse, and you will see a lot of that uh, – you know that talent on display from the exterior like amazing yeah it, guys it's an amazing did, difference in that did a great job um but now we're uh we're talking about the interior so i find the challenge in a lot of this is 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 funding right so we actually have some funding and i know as you know that that building is over 100 years old and much like a remodeling to an older home, when you start opening up walls, what your intended budget essentially becomes your reality budget, right? right? Because there's a lot of unintended consequences hiding behind those walls. And that's just the reality of it. So you and I have had multiple conversations about potential external parties who may be able to cross subsidize what we're doing uh, at the floor of a clubhouse. Um, just as kind of like a refresher, we had Granite City Electric come and meet you and you and me down there and kind of talk about maybe some of the tools or resources that they'd be able to help us with. So when I move to the packet here, um, 
I'm just going to go line by line. The plans and specifications for the replacement of the roof, I think that was something that the roof we knew needed work, but maybe not to the extent of a full replacement. Oh, oh no. So talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind, please. Well, I think it plays to exactly what you're saying about when you get into a renovation and you get the aha, you miss this. Uh, I don't want an aha, because when we start that building, by and large, the building's coming offline. It will not be usable except for the fireplace room. Um, so I don't want to have it offline longer than necessary. So we're doing you know, very diligent uh, investigations of the building before we pull it apart. Um, I'll give you, for instance, uh, we decided, and I've had every building, the municipal owned building that has employees in it, inspected for asbestos as if it were a school. The schools you're required to do on federal and state law. The other buildings are not. Um, but we're going to do work in these buildings. It's best to know what's hot and what's not. So we're just completed having them all done. The Four River Clubhouse we've done previously, um, I just had them test the roof, the layers of roof. So previously, it was done under a different watch. They did the top layer of shingles. There's another layer under it. The layer underneath has asbestos. So, so now you're talking about abatement. Now we're talking about abatement. And that's not something you want to have the roof halfway off and figure out or not figure off till you're done. That's even <laughs> so worse. So you're saying because, you know, some folks in the neighborhood had said, well, you know, the, the roof was replaced not too long ago. Essentially what they did was just shingle over the pre-existing. Yeah, they just which buried comes the with a, a shorter shelf life, essentially. Right? Correct, when you correct. Do it. And when a more expensive fix after it. Okay. Now the issue with that is, I don't know if you ever had the roof down at your house, but when they strip the roof off, everything in your attic gets filthy because all the dirt and dust goes through the cracks of the wood. Well, we can't have that happen if it's asbestos. Yeah. So now before I can do the roof, which I thought was going to be the first thing, we need to do the blown in insulation in the building so as not to allow all that dust and debris into the building. Um, so you're going to blow in the insulation on yeah, the second the, floor? The spray foam insulation into the, into the roof rafters, yep. Into the roof rafters. So it, that's, well, that's let, an let me say this if I'm not called out later. This is, that's the current plan. Um, our asbestos consultant is reviewing that plan to make sure that's feasible and uh, won't cause us other problems. Um, so that's the current plan or the current intention. It's not yet in inked in writing, um, but it appears that that's going to be the solution there. So basically the closed cell insulation sort of binds itself up and acts as uh, a barrier so that when you abate yeah. the shingles from the exterior, it doesn't penetrate. Right. That stuff adheres incredibly strongly to the surface you just sprayed on. And so that'll fill the gaps and such between the planks and will seal uh, anything from coming in. And the closed cell uh, insulation versus the open cell repels water. Water cannot penetrate it. So while the roof is off, if it were to rain or have uh, you know, in infiltration issues, it won't damage the insulation. And down the road, you know, however many years later, when the new roof gets old and starts blowing off in the windstorms like this one does, that foam insulation won't be impacted as well because we'll be using the closed cell. So I can't help but sort of contemplate this, this notion. I know we spoke about it, but you know, I know from my own, you talk about being a, a homeowner. I know from you know, my own experience that you know, MassSave has the program where they'll come out and you know, basically I don't want to say similar to MSBA, but, you know, pennies on the dollar, they'll essentially re-insulate your home. Uh, but I also know they have a commercial component to that as well. And I don't know if commercial stands in, extends into, uh, call it not-for-profit, call it governmental. Um, but have you looked into that at all? That type of a program I have not, um, because I do know that those programs, either the residential or commercial, do not pay for the blown-in insulation. They'll do regular old-fashioned fiberglass insulation. And that won't do what we needed to do in this application. Um, but on the other side of the house, National Grid uh, Gas and Electric gives incentives for saving energy. So if we demonstrate what the current utility bills for that building are and what they're projected to be after it's insulated, they pay you a substantial portion of that difference. They contribute a, a refund or an incentive. Now, National Grid will do the blown-in insulation they'll subsidize it. They won't do the spray insulation. Correct. I'm, I, you know, that's You're kind not of talking about... I'm using the, the foam, spray foam, not the blown in wool. Okay. Because, I mean, technically the, the pink stuff comes in a blown form as well, not necessarily the sheet. So you're talking about... So I, I, when spray. I say blown in, I mean spray on. Gotcha. Okay. So, 
So we find that there's an embedded cost now that we're coming to a conclusion here with uh, closed cell insulation. I'm all, I, the reason I'm asking these questions is I'm trying to back out of a budget because I know, you know, the hardest thing to do is find the resources. When you find the resources, the hardest thing to do on a 100-year-old building is stretch a dollar. Um, so it sounds like we may have found something that we weren't anticipating initially Correct. with this. Correct. Right. And, and that's the purpose of this. As you said, they spiral, the budget spiral. Um, but with proper planning, you can minimize that spiral, and that's what I'm attempting to do. So chat with me a little bit about, and I'm sorry to my counselors, but this has just been a project that I've been on for the last you know, year and a half. Rebuilding the front entrance, uh, that's now going to bid? That's now going out to bid? It's not going to bid. That's going to go to one of my on-call carpenters. Uh, which has gone to bid. That contract has gone to bid. Now we assign work under that contract. We're not going to do it in-house like we originally had thought. No, we're not simply just replacing that flat roof. We're taking the framing we're off. Put a character, let's put some character to it. No, beyond that. The, the actual structure of it itself is going to be rebuilt. We talked about the character with the dormer and the parapet wall with Correct. the mechanicals behind it. But again, as part of the, of, of the planning process, we had the structural integrity of that fl flat roof assessed. And Talking about the entryway with the concrete blocks all around it. Yes. So the concrete columns, but it's a wood right. deck. Right. So the wood deck has to be strong enough to hold those mechanicals and snow, or if the roof drain gets plugged, they, they assume six inches of water. So it has to have the sorry. structural integrity to hold that I'm just that trying weight. to follow you. When you say mechanicals, is that like, what kind of mechanicals? Are you going to basically store in the roof line of the entryway? The, we talked about right now there's two or three um, condensing units on that flat roof right. for the air conditioning system. I do know that. Yep. Yeah. So, and there's three of them on the slope roof on the park side that can't be accessed to, for repairs or maintenance because they're on the slope roof. You want to bring them all roof. centralized? Bring them all central to that area, the flat roof, and that was the purpose of the parapet wall is to block the view of them coming down the road. So to be in a, a decorative parapet wall with the mechanicals behind it. Um, but in order to take the weight of all those mechanicals and again, a snow load, you have to reinforce we, had a, we have to re well, it, it's put just be easier to take there. it off and start over for that roof deck. Yep. And I would assume you'd probably put a beam or something in there. Yep. To yeah. Yeah. Well, they're, they're going to do LVLs and uh, 12 inch on center, 12 inch stock. Wow. All right. So that's something that's a little bit different chewing into the, into the budget. Um, all right. The asbestos plan is being developed for the interior. I know that's been something that's, that's been outstanding, I, I would hope, because we had an asbestos plan for the, the you know, below grade in the basement, which you and I took a tour of that day. You were braver than I was. But <laughs> um, I would have to assume that we've, I want to say, uh, created a, a pricing efficiency for ourselves. Yes, part, part of that work is, yes, the basement is done. So what had been right. the original forecast of the overall abatement is it the same can be company reduced. though? No, the company that left it behind. That was the Honeywell. company that basically put the plan together to take it out of the basement. Do we create an economy of scale with yes. them to yes, now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, and when you think about, and I'm going to come down the home stretch here, but when you think about like the asbestos abatement, um, all I picture, and I hate to say it, but sometimes my my Thoughts go to, you know, uh, just a place that I hope we never end up in, right? So we abate a lot of the, uh, the, the wall material in the floor of a clubhouse is lined with asbestos. And right? the ceilings so like and the floors. So we take all those apart. I would assume, although I should never assume, that we're going to insulate those walls, right? Because we have new windows that were paid for with private dollars. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put the walls back together. Not yet. Not yet. As you, as you suggested, when you're doing renovation, you have unknowns when you get behind the walls. Right. Well, we're taking the walls down, and we're planning ahead. We're going to completely rewire the building to today's code, put in the fire detection system to today's code, put in the plumbing to today's code, then insulate, then close the walls. So we're, we're going to eliminate a lot of the unknowns with this extensive investigation that we're doing now and just the planned complete gut uh, rather than impartial. No, I understand. So, like, during this conversation, I guess the question becomes, like, how are we going to interact with some of the community partners to see if, 
you know, their uh, corporate generosity may, 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 may find itself into this process, therefore allowing us to stretch our budget. You've worked with me long enough that uh, this is the way my brain works. Okay. And, you know, taxpayer money is taxpayer money. Yep. And it's not, uh, it's not infinite. So how do we incorporate potentially? So if that corporate generosity and that corporate goodwill is in the form of a check, we'll gladly take it and come, come here and, and vote to accept it. If it's uh, weekend warriors that you know, work during the day and are looking to do a large job on a volunteer basis, I would strongly advise against it, and I quite honestly wouldn't want any part of it. Um, because generally, they do it if there's a slow period, and then when they get busy, they've no, got I bills, they're going to take care of their home, and they do their own first, and we're left with a half-completed project. But the conversation that we had down at the clubhouse was, hey, when you get to the uh, electrical layout and sort of the template design, like call us back in because we may be able to augment uh, your efforts with some of our resources. So whether that is, uh, I don't know what that, I don't know what that means, but it sounded like you were going to drive the ship and circle back with them and they were maybe going to be uh, coming to the table, probably not with labor to your point, but maybe resources, uh, materials. Right. So I've got so, uh, on call and working on that, the electrical design, the electrical engineers, uh, and it's about a 30% prepared drawings at this point. Uh, we advanced them a little bit more. We can then have that conversation. Uh, I'm just can saying, because I know how that sometimes, again, I, getting back to how overwhelmed are you, before a clubhouse starts going, you know, the, the template design's going, it's just go. And then, you know, now we're using the budget for stuff that we may or may not have to. Mm -hmm. But I think it's an opportunity or at least an option that de deserves further exploration. Right. That's so, again, once, once they advance a little bit more of that design, that would be the time for that conversation so they can help inform the design or uh, know what is needed uh, to execute it. And then they can, they can uh, then pull their resources and see what they're available. Final question. Um, does the bathroom, which has been kind of a sore spot for, for many folks, uh, how does that now once upon a time we were pursuing like a grant uh we got community preservation funding for one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. i thought it was a grant to create handicap accessibility that's from the community preservation yes really yep one hundred twenty five thousand. uh and then finance was working on it i thought it was a federal grant we did municipal finance and um steven pesovich were writing one um that got denied by the yep. state. Okay. Yep. So pivot, go to CPs. Gotcha. Yep. So the bathroom, the men's room, I'm assuming? Both like, of them. Both of them. Complete, blow them up and start over. Different configuration. So both would be off of the front lobby rather than one off of the function space and things like that. So the number one, and this is not another question, it's a statement. The number one question that I get from folks is like, particularly the, uh, uh, the individuals that utilize the exercise class, lovely people, but it's known out there that there's going to be a big project coming to the floor of a clubhouse. Like, how do I effectively communicate that to folks uh, with, with or by establishing some sort of timeline? So we're, we're in the winter. Is this, because I remember what happened last year. It was the same thing. You know, then the recreation department was utilizing the space and we couldn't, so we're, we're right. heading down that track. Correct. Yeah, Michelle's we, already called me. What is it? Michelle has called me. Michelle Hanley. Right. Yeah. So it, you see my well, point. Cause I do. We, uh, we went through but, this movie last year. Correct. Uh -huh. uh, and we've been advancing the designs. And thankfully we did because now we understand the issue with the roof. Um, so much like the old colony, I don't want to get in and rush it, have the place offline longer than it needs to be. I want to have all the planning, all the investigation, all the design done before we take the building offline. Um, it's very helpful to us that we have online on-call designers under contract, architects and engineers. That's advancing our ability to execute work, um, you know, tenfold. We don't have to deal with procurement every time we go to do something. Um, and, and they are working on the HVAC, the plumbing, and the uh, electrical systems as we speak. Those designs are being advanced. So like a more perceived timeline like am I communicating to folks, you're going to see 
some stuff really starting to happen in the spring. No, it wouldn't be this spring. If anything, it would be the roof this spring, but the, the, the take down of the building, take, take it offline. I, I really, I would be leading you astray if I thought it was this spring. It's more like next fall. Because the, the roof, um, doing the insulation, now we have to go in, we have to clean out everything upstairs, pull down all the ceilings and all that, which is upstairs, which is in itself partially of the building. Yep. And then spraying all that foam, then attack the roof. So, so I would be factually accurate if I said to folks, you can anticipate a renovation of the roof and probably the upper dormers or the eaves of the building in the spring to summer yes. with the building coming offline in the fall. That would be the most accurate estimate at this time, yep. Okay, all right. I, um, thank you, Mr. President and to my fellow counselors here yeah. for listening to the history of the four of a clubhouse. But I just want to, you know, further reiterate, this is a very important project to our district. We've been working hard on it, putting funding sources together. Uh, nothing happens without multiple parties coming to the table, but we're really, really anxious to execute here. So I appreciate, uh, I appreciate your willingness to, uh, to move the ball forward. Certainly. All right. Thank you, Councilor Crowell. Any other councilors? All right, Paul. Uh, my understanding is there's some gates <laughs> here, and there's supposed to be a, a seal above us. Those um, would fall under your purview as uh, the gates. I'm aware of. Right? We yeah. actually found them. Yeah. The seal is not mine. There's somebody with a higher creative eye than I. Yeah. Can we get a seal in here? Or are you saying no? I'm not saying no. I'm just saying it's not my decision where it's going. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right, next on the agenda is approval. You can, you can go. Uh, next on the agenda is approval of previous minutes. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the meeting minutes from February 3rd, 2020? Motion to approve by Councilor Kroll, second by Councilor McCarthy. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The meeting minutes are approved. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any communications or reports from the mayor, other city officers, or city boards? Yes, um, I do have. All of us. Go ahead. I have two utility requests to refer to Public Works Committee for advertising, grant a location for Mass Electric for 56 and 72 Colonial Drive, and a grant a location Mass Electric Calvin Road for the Broad Meadows Middle School. Thank you. Is that it? Yes. All right. Always fascinating. All right. Uh, next on the agenda, unfinished business from the preceding meeting. Seeing none, take reports of committees. Councilor McCarthy. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hold on, you're doing a little slow on the uptake tonight. Right. Councilor McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to move forward with uh, 2020-033 appropriation, 817,961 for MWRA, I and I reduction program phase 11 allocation, and put that in the form of a motion. Okay. Do I hear a second on the motion? Councilor Phelan. Uh, anybody have any discussion? About the motion? Don't let me disturb you. But, okay. Uh, do we need a uh, roll call vote? Yes. All right. Madam Clerk. Council Kroll. Roll. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Pelmucci. Yes. Seven members. Seven votes. The matter passes. Council Thank McCarthy, you. anything else out of finance? Uh, 2020-34 appropriation for $4,330,000 MWRA INI reduction program phase 12 allocation and put that in the form of a motion also. And do I hear a second? Councilor Harris. Anyone want to be heard? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, if you call the rule. Councilor Kroll. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Pelmucci. Yes. Seven members. Does that tidy you up, Councilor McCarthy? You all set? All set. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Harris. Okay, so uh, um, public works, uh, this evening we had public hearing was held uh, at 720-2020-023 utility grant location, Mass Electric Verizon, Watkins Street, positive recommendation from the Public Works Committee. Motion to approve. Do we hear a second? Second. Councilor Phelan, anyone uh, wish to be heard on that matter? No. Madam Clerk, call Council the Council Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Council McCarthy. Yes. 
Council Phelan. Yes. President Pelmucci. Present. Seven members. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Six members, Six matter members. passes. Okay, we had a public hearing earlier, and it was at 725, Council Order 2020-024, Utility Grant Location, National Grid, Newbury Ave, positive recommendation from the Public Works Committee, motion to approve. Do we hear a second? Councilor Phelan, second. Anybody wishing to be heard? Madam Clerk, call the roll. Councilor Kroll. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Pelmochi. Yes. Seven members. Seven members, the matter passes. Is that everything? Yes. Out of public works? That's it. All right, thank you. Anybody else, any reports committee? Hi. Councilor Mahoney. I do have some reports from Hitty. So the ordinance committee items that have been passed, all these um, all these items, traffic requests, were advertised in the um, Quincy Sun on 130, 2020. And um, we're looking to move positive recommendation on these. But we'll start with 2020-025 at handicap parking at 117 Marymount Road. And it's move uh, motion to motion of positive recommendation. And a second by Councilor Kroll, motion by Councilor Mahoney. Anyone wish to be heard? Seeing nobody, Madam Clerk. Councilor Kroll. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Pelosi. Yes. Seven members. Seven members, the matter passes. Councilor Mahoney gets more. 2020 026, remove handicap parking at 4 Alton Road. Um, motion to for a positive recommendation. Do I hear a second? Second, Councilor Kroll. Anyone wish to be heard? No, Madam Clerk. Councilor Kroll. Yes. Councilor Devona. Yes. Council Harris. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Helmucci. Yes. Seven members. 2020-027, remove handicap parking at 12 Sunnyside Road. Uh, motion for positive recommendation. Do I hear a second? Second, Council McCarthy. Anyone wishing to be heard? Madam Clerk. Council Kroll. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. 2020-028, add no left turn, Granite Street to Lark Street, 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. and 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Motion for uh, motion for positive recommendation. Motion made by Councilor Mahoney, second by Councilor Kroll. Anyone wish to be heard? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Councilor Kroll. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Pomochi. Seven yes. members. 2020-029. Add no right turn. Granite Street to Lock Street. 7:30 a.m. to 8:30 a.m. 12 and uh, 12 p.m. to 3 3 o'clock p.m. Motion for positive recommendation. Motion by Councillor Mahoney. Second by Councillor Kroll. Seeing no one wishing to speak. Councillor uh, Madam Clerk. Councillor Kroll. Yes. Councillor DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Pomochi. Yes. Seven members. 2020-030, add one way Center Street, Copeland Street, and to one way to Center Street, Copeland Street, and to West Street. Uh, motion for a positive recommendation. Uh, do I hear a second? Second by Council Kroll. Madam Clerk. Council Kroll. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Pomochi. Yes. Seven members. <coughs> 2020-031, add handicap parking at 50 Elucid Ave. Motion for positive recommendation. Council made by, uh, motion made by Councilor Mahoney, second by Councilor Kroll, Madam Clerk. Councilor Kroll. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Pelmucci. Yes. Seven members. And finally, 2020-032, add no parking east side of Home Street, Burger Street to Haywood Street. Uh, motion for positive recommendation. Motion made by Council Mahoney, second by Council Crow. Madam Clerk. Council Crow. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Pelosi. Yes. Seven members. Is that everything for you? That is. All right. Any other reports of committees? Seeing none. Presentations of petitions, memorials, or remonstrances. Anyone? Council Mahoney. Um, this is more of a uh, 
celebration. So I just wanted to mention, um, and this is, this is about my parents, Mary and Joe Mulligan, celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary. I did do a little Google. There's actually no percentage of people who make it to the 70th. There's lots of people in Quincy who make it to their 70th, so that's to say something. But um, my parents celebrated their 70th wedding anniversary on February 4th. And we had a fantastic celebration yesterday, and I would like to thank both Mayor Koch and um, State Rep Bruce Ears for coming out. And um, yes, there was a peace treaty between Tom Koch and myself, <laughs> and it was a great day. Um, and it was, it was with great enthusiasm that we celebrated their um, 70 years. And the one thing that I can say that I have definitely in common with many people, including Mayor Koch, is family is the most important. And the celebration of 70 years and the health of my parents are two things that I'm very, very happy to be able to report here at the council and I'm hoping that and I can tell you that my dad hopes to be around for my daughter's my youngest daughter's wedding and she is um, 17 years old and there's no plan for her to get married anytime soon and there's a rule in the in the Mulligan house although I broke it you can't get married as a female until you're 30 so <laughs> so that you have to have you have to live a life and get a good education and work um, but I wanted to mention that because it was just a great celebration yesterday I wanted to thank the mayor and thank Bruce Sears and the state delegation for um, coming and, and representing them because it is a, it's a pretty outstanding thing. And thank you very much for letting me indulge because I know they watch and they tell me how tired I look all the time. So um, <laughs> I'll give them a wave. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks, Anybody else? Councilor Harris. Thank you. Um, real quick, and that's with a uh, heavy heart. Um, John Boyle, uh, he was a, a um, Longtime uh, Quincy resident, uh, actually in 19, you talk about a family celebration, in 1987, he, he videoed my uh, wedding with those old big cameras, but he passed uh, at the age of 90. And he was well known, very well known for, uh, he was an institution at the Kennedy Center, so any of the folks who uh, would go in, he was, he was the greeter and uh, he, gave his opinion and told politics. And I remember when I first ran for office, he was uh, uh, telling everybody to vote for me. So he was, a, but he's a long time old friend uh, of the, of the, of course, the Harris family and my, uh, my wife's in-laws, he, he um, the Boyles. So uh, um, uh, th thank you for indulging that. He was a real character and uh, he's, he's missed, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you say you were married in 1977? 87. 87. Okay. Yeah. In that's, 77. That's much more reasonable, I yeah, would right. say. I was a, I was a. Because so you look good for. I was a junior at, okay. in, in right, high school good. in 77. All right. Anybody, any other uh, petitions, remonstrances? Uh, okay. Motions, orders, resolutions. Just pretty much moot now with the open meeting law, right? Because you can't, can't do anything on the fly. Whatever. All right. Scheduling of committee meetings and public hearings. Public Works, you can get a couple for us? Yes. Um, oh, yes. Uh, at, uh, on March 23rd, it, I'd like to have a, a public hearing a petition at 720. Petition for grant of location of Mass Electric for 56 and 72 Colonial Drive. And at 725, a petition for grant of location of Mass Electric for Calvin Road, um, Brook Meadows Middle School. OK. Is that everything he needed? Yep. Okay. With that, I will entertain a motion from myself to adjourn. Second the motion. All right. <laughs>